This is the Steve Shriver Podcast, where entrepreneur, adventurer, and community activist Steve Shriver shares what he's learned on his journey so you can make it in business and make it good. The big topic for this episode... We are talking about NIL, otherwise known as name, image, and likeness, with former professional football player and very successful entrepreneur, Nate Kading. You know, if they have a side hustle where they're... You know, going down to the auto dealership and signing autographs or tweeting out something and high D's paying them five grand right. or something like absolutely go for it. I mean that's they they own them and they've worked hard for that. And we'll be right back. The Steve Shriver podcast is brought to you by Ecolips, the original organic lip balm. Use the promo code PODCAST20 for 20% off your first order on Ecolips.com. Ecolips, all natural organic lip balm. Deeply connected with nature, applying beneficial organic ingredients to better people's lives. A proud certified B Corp founded in 2003. Ecolips, spread the good. And spread the promo code PODCAST20 into that promo code box. It's good for 20% off your first order on Ecolips.com. So Nate, thank you so much for being on the podcast with me. I'm I'm excited to hear about what you have going on, and also just in general, uh, what you think about this name, image, likeness thing. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, doing great, enjoying the enjoying the Iowa summer here. So it's been a it's been a fun summer. Had the chasing the kids around. They're kind of deep in the youth sports thing now, getting to that age. So that's been fun. And uh, now, just once that's been over around the Fourth of July, just been enjoyed that holiday and playing some golf and working a lot and just hanging out yeah okay good segue into my next so i mean i know i know you because you're, i mean you're like you know probably the most famous person that i know um <laughs> yeah. so you're, you i mean you're just like me born in iowa city that's cool but yeah. then you were a college athlete uh, and then went to, went on to the nfl uh for nine years and so but how do you what i mean wh- how do you say what you do and who you are <laughs> Yeah, I mean, certainly what I what I used to do is a, a big part of my story, right? And just in terms of, uh, you know, the NFL and football and those sort of things. I mean, to a large folks and pretty much everybody, you know, I'm going to be known for the most part as a guy that used to kick footballs, you know, as, as part of my part of my story. But that turned the page on that on that chapter um, six, uh, seven years ago when I retired from the NFL and moved back to Iowa. And I have really just enjoyed the transition um, into what I'm doing now, which is kind of a you know, a bit of a, a variety pack, which I enjoy, but, uh, you know, focused on doing some real estate development um, and, you know, business development for a construction management company, Build the Suit. We've done some fun projects, continue to work with a lot of great companies around the area, uh, helping them on their, uh, you know, facilities improvement programs. And then also me and a couple of development buddies have built some apartment projects and um, working on a large development right now in Cedar Rapids on the former, you um, uh, on the first and first West project, as they're calling it there in Kingston Village, in uh, that nine acre site west of the river. So that's been a lot of fun. And then, you know, not unlike you, Steve, you know, uh, invested in and uh, a part of some some fun small businesses. I've got a great buddy, Matt Swift, who's the founder CEO of Big Grove Brewery. Um, him and his team and our, our buddy, we're all, you know, really good buddies, which is kind of the fun part. We've, and, you know, started a few restaurants together, St. Birch Tavern and Pullman Bar and Diner. We're opening a new... Uh, a new sports bar restaurant in the Iowa river landing next to the arena this fall called the Iowa athletic club, which is just kind of starting to bubble nice. up in the surface. Yeah. So that's, that's going to be a lot of fun. And, um, and then me and a, another business partner, um, back in late fall purchased uh, quality care, the, uh, long care. Oh, yeah. So we're, um, we're, we're poking around on that business and really enjoyed getting to know that industry, uh, the service industry and, and doing that. So yeah, we stay, you know, stay busy and I enjoy the active investment side of it. I really enjoy the development piece, you know, probably not unlike you, just the, the building, not only of, yeah. of businesses, but of, of physical things and helping, you know, put, put, put businesses out into the world that, that are good for our community, good for the people that work there and places that, uh, you know, do right by the customer. So I've- you're like one of the few people that actually might have more going on than me. I'm feeling, I'm feeling small right now, dude. <laughs> yeah. You just rattled off. I don't know about that, but I know the same is true for you. I, I really, you know, the core ingredient to what I do is, is the partnership. And I, I don't, um, you know, but, you know, on the business ownership side and people that have skill sets that complement my own and people that, you know, 
have shared same share the same values and the interest in growing companies and doing it the right way. So I I, I certainly don't pretend to do it alone. And um, but yeah, I've I've really enjoyed diving into the business scene post football. Awesome, awesome. So you're so you're an entrepreneur. You're you're you obviously like you know I don't know if you have you always wanted to be an entrepreneur or it is it something that happened after football or. Yeah, I always kind of think of it in terms of, you know, what are the takeaways? I get asked that a lot, you know, when I'm speaking to different groups of people too, you know, like what are the the common threads, I guess, that, you know, from football, what do you learn? What do you like about it? I mean, in business, it is that it's there's a competitive element to it, right? Where it's, you know, hey, someone's doing it here and how can I be different? And it's not so much better, but it's, you know, how can I how can I be different? How can I identify, you know, an opportunity in a market and how can you put the team together, right? That's, that's going to yep. go, go get it done. I'm a big... Big believer. I just finished the book. It's kind of been the one of the buzzy business book this summer. You know, it's not, not who but how. Um, you know, I've enjoyed reading that. that that's re- it's very simple. But the whole premise behind that is, you know, it's not you know necessarily the product or the widget or the service that you're doing, but it's the the people that are making it happen. And if you have a new yep. business idea, it's don't think about how you want to get it done, but who who is the right person to that can help you get that accomplished. So, um, oh, I think, I that's huge. That, yeah. yeah, that that whole teamwork element and, you know, kind of the, if you're the GM or the producer, who are the people that you need to get put in the right seats in order to get the, all those, all those things figured out and done. So I think for me, those, those are sort of the, you know, core to entrepreneurship and, you know, certainly some, some themes there that I've pulled, pulled from and learned from my football days as well. Right. So all of a sudden now, and let's, let's get into this NIL thing, name, image, likeness. So now yeah. all of a sudden, uh, is it, I mean, is it true that we literally have, you know, a hundred thousand brand new entrepreneurs <laughs> on the landscape who all yeah. can just start making money? I, I think it is, and I think it's it's exciting. You know, I was kind—I of, probably would have put myself in that camp before of like, you know, do we do we pay off? I think it's—I think this is an interesting place to land, right, for college athletics and just college athletes themselves, where there's a lot of conversation over the last, you know, almost decade around, do we pay college athletes? And by pay, right. I think I've, a lot of people kind of understood that being getting paid by the university to play. But now I think this is maybe a good compromise in a way where, you know, the university, I don't think should pay them. I was definitely, I am in that camp. I mean, they're getting a scholarship, they're, they're collegiate athletes, but now they have this opportunity to, to make money as sponsor, or, you know, sponsorship money as endorsers of products. Because they are, these are famous people, and especially in today's social media era and age where they can influence purchasing decisions, and there isn't any reason why a college or the NCAA should control whether or not, a, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year old person, you know, who can go right, out and work, right. like, you know, if they have a side hustle where they're, you know, going down to the auto dealership and signing autographs or tweeting out something and high V's paying them five grand right. or something like that. Absolutely, go for it. I mean, that's they they own them and they've worked hard for that. And yeah, the the colleges and the universities have provided them a platform um, to do that. But still, I think it's a it's an exciting new frontier that's out there. I know we've kind of had some conversations a bit about it at some of the restaurant businesses that I'm involved with. It's like, how, what's the right way to to go about it? How is it tasteful? How do you you know make sure it's not a distraction for the student athlete as well? I think maybe I'm a little bit more conscious and considerate of that having been a former collegiate student athlete but um i'm really interested to see like what are all the second order impact right. you know what what ha- well, what are the what are the consequences what what what's the ripple effects what does this mean can you uh i mean just like you said you, you know you like you like putting your you know putting a team together and and so my question would be can can you be a good athlete uh, let's not forget they're, they go to school. So can they be a good student yeah. and, and still manage a business or grow a business? And if so, I mean, uh, you know, what kind of team are they going to need to be able to pull that off? Is it just going to, is it going to be their parents? Is it going to be a third party? Does it depend on the size of, you know, their fame? Yeah, it's going to accelerate, um, you know, things that I learned and all professional athletes learn eventually, right? Where I think there's a couple key lessons that they're all going to need to learn really early on. First of which is you, none of it else, none of it matters unless you, unless you're really good at what you do on the field or the basketball court, right? Like that in and of itself is the only reason why anybody gives a crap about your name, image, or likeness. I mean, I hate to put it bluntly. I mean, there's some really smart and creative and good people out there that are, that are, they're more, 
they're they're more people than they you know they're more they're about more things than just playing a sport. But let's be right. honest, I mean that's the only reason why we know about any you know Luca Garza you know is an amazing human being, but n- none nobody in Iowa Hawkeye land would know Luca Garza unless he was an amazing basketball player, right? So I think that's a universal truth that that whomever's advising these student athletes needs to 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 drive home really quickly is that not you know, you're, you got to play, you, you got to take care of what you got to take care of in the classroom and on the, and on the sports field and in the arena first and foremost. And then the other okay. stuff will kind of, will kind of follow and fall in suit from there. Then you can't let that stuff distract you or in, impact negatively the things that you need to take care of in the classroom and on the, and on the arena. I mean, if I were advising those kids, I mean, that's what you have to do. And I'm sure they're hearing that from the, from the coaches, right? Like it can't be a distraction. Um, you can't let it become that it, you, you got to kind of keep your focus where it's at. Then the rest of it will sort of fall into place. So I think that's, that's the good advice that I, I hope that most of them are getting, but like even professional athletes, they're going to, you know, I'm sure wander into some really bad, <laughs> you know, endorsement right. deals. So they're going to find themselves sitting in the, you know, it might look good to, you know, Hey, someone's going to write you a $300 check, but you're sitting in the fifth hour of signing autographs at some random, you know, expo right. of some sort, you know, like they're going to learn how valuable their time is. They're going to learn, the importance of, of good partnerships, of value alignment. My hope is that some of these kids just aren't going out and, you know, schlepping, you know, for the local vape right. shop or something, you know, right. like, I, I hope, I hope they're selective, you know, they're not just doing random things. Right. And, um, right. Yeah, like anything in life, right. They're going to learn, this, right. learn these lessons. That's, on their own. So that's, that's my biggest fear. I, I fear that because I know how many challenges we, and you know, that we've had to overcome as entrepreneurs alone, just fo- solely focusing on building a business. And some people have an amazing opportunity to really, I mean, potentially set themselves up really, really good for the future. And, and I'm just worried, I'm worried they're going to screw it up, you know? And yeah. so I guess, you know, that my, my fear, like I'm not even into, I don't, I'm not into organized sports. Um, but I want to help them. I'm like, I, I would like to help create some sort of foundation to, uh, to help them at least understand, uh, do you know if there are any, or, I mean, I'm sure there are, but are there organizations out there that are currently helping young athletes to my, learn? Yeah. My guess is there's probably some sort of cottage industry that's popping up around, you know, essentially an agent, right? Mm-hmm, like right. These people can, um, they can pay agents to represent them and, manage the inquiries that come in and i know you know a few of them might you know probably have a, an uncle or a dad or a yep. friend of the family that's a business person that hopefully they're getting if they're getting a lot of these that are that are coming in i'm sure there's a handful of the kids that are sort of doing it on themselves but no it's a great idea that you know there should be some system in place but i think my understanding of it is the universities are sort of in a difficult place because they cannot by law be advising and these are really, I think back to college athletics and like really the, your only advisors are basically your coaches and the people in the athletic department and those sort of folks. So you almost have to go out, the university is being forced, is forcing these student athletes to get outside of that network of, of advisors. Even though we have this great like entrepreneurial program at the U of yeah. I or in yeah, most so it's like, universities. It's all that weird legal web that they got to, that, right. that needs to be woven, um, you know, so get out of there. But yeah, they all, they definitely, need to, especially the ones, I mean, that, you know, it's really like your top five, 10% of the most notable ones that are probably going to get the most interest. Right. So my hope is that those folks have kind of had the self realized enough and had the self-awareness enough to kind of say, Hey, I need some help here to think through this. Right, right. I don't want to undervalue myself. I don't want to get aligned with the wrong people. I don't want to sign up for some five-year deal. And all of a sudden someone's playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers and they're coming back to Cedar Rapids to, you know, to the sub, to the sub shop, to, you know, to, right. to do well, it's like, on the hook right. it's like the thing that you read about that happens to a lot of uh, famous musicians, you know, they get signed, even, you know, yeah. uh, they get signed with, with a bad label and all of a sudden somebody's making a lot of money and they're, they're the ones creating the work. And I think uh, it's, I think it's so fresh too, that I think there's going to be some organic kind of guardrails put on the private sector. Like you don't want to be the company that like, comes out that took advantage of right name name your innocent you know uh jordan bohannon yeah Yeah, jordan bohannon someone that's just trying to figure out the waters and what's the right fit right so i think there's going to be some natural sort of uh um, pressure on these businesses to do it right um but i again these second secondary order consequences you know i you hear nick saban talk about like you know his quarterback 
is might get like a million bucks. So it's like, does this recruit, does this create some sort of, you know, tip the scales on the recruiting uh, ledger, you know, even more so in favor of the big, the big market, yeah. like big name colleges. If you go, Hey, not only am I sign Alabama, but I'm, you know, they look at the last three quarterbacks have made half a million bucks off the field. Like that's real money. And that when you're, when you're weighing going to Alabama versus Iowa state or something that makes yeah. that decision that much more easy. Yeah. It's part of the whole, I mean, it's part of the whole package, right? The, the compensation package. That's yeah. pretty wild. This is, I mean, it is going to be fun to see where this goes. Yeah. And but I, I think it, I think it's going to make these athletes mature more. And I think, you know, we're recording this now in the middle of the Olympics and the big talk, not only in sports world, but beyond that is, uh, Naomi Osaka and, and Simone Biles both pulling out of the Olympics due to mental health issues and concerns. I mean, I think it's a, it's a, it's a huge part of being an athlete is, is balancing all of the different demands on you and your time and the pressures and the anxieties. And, you know, if all of a sudden you're sitting there lining up to hit a free throw at the game on the line and things start running through your head about like, man, if I miss this, like, what's my sponsor going to think? Is this going to hinder my ability to to get yeah. sponsors and yeah. become reliant upon that. I think there's all these sort of like personal identity and mental health things that really these athletes need to be working on. What did you do? Forward. What did you do when you were getting up to kick? I mean, how did you keep all of that for yeah, you, that many years? <laughs> you learn, all that noise out. Trial by fire and, and failure. And I think, the, I think the thing I always tell people, and I try to work with as many young, young kickers and, uh, you know, athletes out there as, as possible as much as I can. I think you you need to put yourself in those sort of pressure situations and practice it a lot and get your heart rate up and do it. But there isn't like any sort of prescriptive way to learn how to deal with it. You have to have a, a set process, something to take your mind off of uh, <clears throat> off of everything else um, getting in there because either you're going to control your thoughts with kind of action process oriented thinking or your mind's yeah. immediately going to kind of race towards you know the other things either think thinking ahead about you know the positive outcome or the negative outcomes or all those sort of things so i think you, you it's really, like being in the moment yeah you got to be in the moment you got to be equipped you got to train your mind in order to do that and i think i think the big thing is just it's i call it the two a's but awareness and acceptance you need to be aware of your thoughts be proactive and putting your own thoughts in there but you also need to accept the fact that the human mind is wired in a way where these all these random thoughts are going to kind of pop into your head and you need to accept the fact that that's just normal and, and learn how to let them kind of come in your mind and sort of float out and, and go. Yeah. Go there. Yes. All right. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so was, um, yep. let's go, let's go back to 18, 18 or 19 year old Nate Kading. Uh, how would you have capitalized on the name image likeness ruling? Man, I don't know. I, I would hate to, I mean, i scared for myself coming up through there. You know, I had a couple of years stretch at Iowa where we were winning a lot of games and I had some success and I was the local kid and, you know, with it came some notoriety and those sort of things. So it would have been, I mean, it would have been tough. Frankly, it would have been tough. And, it, and it's, it's tough just as a college athlete when you start getting some of that, you know, call it whatever you want, fame or notoriety or, you know, your tribe member after my junior year, I was, you know, first team All-American and was winning all these awards and you go on this sort of award circuit like the playboy all-american banquet and the espn you know show and all these sort of things and i mean it's hard not to think that that has a weird impact on your psyche and what you're doing and there's just tons of demand on, on your time you know being a student athlete and all this so i couldn't imagine kind of balancing all the other things as well i mean right but if, 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 you know you hate to think if someone's trying to bring you a five ten thousand twenty thousand dollar endorsement contract you're probably going to make time to <laughs> to do it I right mean, that's, right that's crazy, that's crazy well, you, money as someone that's never had a job before you know that's true well and so then you have the whole aspect of like i, I remember hearing stories about um professional athletes that were making so much money that i mean they literally just throwing the checks in the top of the locker and they're just stacking up <laughs> yeah, or all right or taking um you know, like leaving practice and taking a private jet to the Bahamas or whatever. Yeah. And meanwhile, I mean, if I remember right, you were, you were still driving like a, a old clunker to, to work, <laughs> yeah. you know, I drove, so a, like, uh, I drove a Toyota Camry hybrid, um, for which is actually like the quintessential stereotypical, like kicker car to have out there. And you're pulling up, <laughs> pulled up next to all the big, like Range Rovers and Maseratis and stuff in the NFL parking lot. But that's no, awesome. Uh, it's definitely, uh, but, but finance. Could, yeah, finance, financial literacy. I mean, there's just going to be a lot of growing up for these kids that needs to happen quick and soon. And I think you hit it on the head, though, Steve. Like, 
they need a great support network around them. You know, yeah. I mean, if I were advising them or what I would hope I would have been aware enough about, I was like, Hey, this is a lot of work. Like let's just find someone and have them do it for me. And, you know, bring, yeah. bring, me, bring me stuff every couple of weeks and let's, let's evaluate it. And let's, you know, let's pick a couple, you know, you can't, you gotta learn, yeah. you probably gotta learn to say no. You gotta be really good at saying right. no and being super selective. Well, I was thinking too, like, because at this point in college, well, and again, you know more than I do, but like, I'm thinking the, the agent is there to, for your career. And I'm thinking maybe somebody separate focusing on the brand management side of it, the yeah, brand, know. the brand ambassador, you know, um, or, you know, brand manager piece of it. So um, is, is it something that, uh, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but like, are, do you do you give guidance to? I mean, if somebody can, people get a hold of you and and say, hey, "Will yeah, you help me out?" And I try to met you know do as much mentoring as possible, and I think there's that network there. And I think, um, yeah, I mean, absolutely, I I would, and and not necessarily just on this, but on other things, try to make a point of providing advice and being there for counsel yeah. for people as they come up through that. But um, yeah, I mean, it's it is it's like the wild west. It's like a new a bit of a new frontier yeah. out there, and I. I, I think too, I think it's a unique thing for maybe that really upper, upper echelon of people at the colleges that have 50,000 Instagram, you know, like it's just those people that probably have those really huge social media followings. Those are probably going to be the more valuable endorsers or, or potential NIL folks. So right, right. That's another thing too, is it's going to put a really an increasing, even more so increased importance on social media profiles. Cause if you're, I mean, if you were looking at it for Bohemia or I look at it for like, Iowa Athletic Club or St. Birch yeah. Town, like, yeah. okay, how influential is this person? They immediately are going to go to like their Facebook page or TikTok or Instagram or Twitter and like, okay, here's one person that's not even on any of these social media platforms, but they're amazing. But here's another one that's very active on there and they've got 100,000 Twitter followers. Like, that's a pretty valuable endorser. So it's really going to yeah. force people to kind of be more active on social media and get all that done. So to your point about business and brand building, like, it might be smart for some of these people to pay a small group to kind of manage their social media world. Yep. You know? Yep. So at, when they're thinking about putting that team together yeah. um, and, and maybe, or, or maybe it is that simple. Maybe it's like, Hey, you know what? Just, yeah. You, maybe you don't need a whole team. Maybe just, just start with the social media and build that credibility up. And yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. If you had one word of advice um, or, you know, any bit of advice, what would it be? First of all, you, get some advice, get some counsel around you to help you and, you know, find someone to kind of take most, if not all of the heavy lifting off of your plate. I think that's really the, the first thing. Second thing I would, I would encourage them to do is be selective, you know, instead of taking on 20 different opportunities that are going to net you X amount, let, you know, leverage and negotiate for five or three that might get you the same amount. You know what I'm saying? Cause I think you, know, you could probably mm -hmm. use that as a leveraging tool, right? As saying, Hey, I've gotten 50 offers, but I'm only, I only have time and availability for five, but here's my price tag. And then that exclusivity will kind of sell itself, you know? Yeah. Yep. I, I would advise her on that, um, and that ability to be selective. And also, I mean, I, I don't know. I, we're kind of business guys, right? I would tell them to kind of go for it, you know? <laughs> like, right. Yes. Take, take yes. A, take a risk or two, you know? You know, maybe, you know, take one or two on, put, you know, have fun with it, you know, ne negotiate. Learn from it. Ne negotiate the shit out of some of these companies, you know, see how much money you can get. Like, <laughs> Yeah, have fun with it. Learn, learn from it. You know, don't be putting yourself in any long-term contracts. You know, just kind of yeah. do some simple stuff out of the gate and, and try to try to maximize it. You know, it's a it's a new market out there. Yeah, there's some controversy around this. Like, yeah. what? And are you following that? And do you? Because it doesn't necessarily sound when you're talking about this. It you seem really optimistic. But like, why why is it so controversial in the first place? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's, well, first of all, it's just change, right? So it's something different and there's always going to be a camp of folks that don't like it when things transition or change into something else. Um, yeah, there's, I, and I, there's some of that just kind of old school, like, Hey, these are collegiate amateur athletes. And until they go professional, like we got to keep them out of there. And I do think some of it, it, you know, some of the criticism is born from um, just that bit of sort of benevolence and wanting to kind of look out for these kids, right? Like I think a lot of the dynamics that we've been talking about, those are real things. And I think people are just genuinely concerned about the, you know, the impact this might have on, you know, as a distraction and, um, 
you know, the, the mental health, the pressures, yep. all those okay. sort of things. I, I think some of it maybe comes from there. I think with the hope that like there's a support network and system for them. So it doesn't, doesn't become a negative. Yeah. I totally get it, man. So the majority of, of my podcast, it's like, I, I say that I'm spreading the gospel of entrepreneurship. Yeah. And when this, when this thing happened, um, it, it, it was amazing. I mean, for me, I'm like, Oh, this is, I mean, I'm looking at like coolest thing in the world for somebody. Yeah. Like, first of all, how can you limit me on if somebody wants to buy a t-shirt with my name on it? I mean, I, 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 I don't like the idea of somebody telling me I can't do that, you know, right. but I understand that that's part of the existing culture, but man, I was like, this is, this is awesome. It's going to yeah. create, hopefully it's going to create a lot more successful people, hopefully more sustainable success. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm totally excited about it. So, and yeah. if any, if, as from the entrepreneurial perspective, not the sports world, um, if anybody is listening to this that wants, you know, some help getting started uh, in your business, I'm definitely here for you. I, I thrive in these conversations, just like I'm having with Nate right now. So, yeah, and I, and yeah, you hit it on the head too, Steve. I think it's a great opportunity for them to reach out to folks like yourself or whomever and uh, learn about business, right? Like, I think it yeah. kind of gets them in and around some real life. And that, again, that's another thing we didn't talk much about, but like, one of the big challenges for athletes is transitioning out of the sports world, whether that happens after college or professional or whatever. And like, what better way to kind of get in there and get that exposure and start learning about it and network, right? Like the ability to right. kind of work with, with businesses and business owners and people that represent businesses. I mean, it's going to, you know, really provide yeah. for opportunity for people. Well, yeah. And, you know, I can just see the discussions being a lot different at the existing networking events, you know, you know, during, you know, during the, the school year, even just, um, I'm sure, you know, there'd be a lot more business talk and, and we yeah. geek out on, we geek out and in, in, on business talk. So like, I'm, I'm stoked. So yeah. I, I, I really appreciate, yeah, you sharing your knowledge. Um, and, uh, man, thanks for everything that you do around the community and continue to start. I mean, I can you just listed off three things, you know, when you did your opener that I didn't even know you, you were into. So <laughs> man, <It's all> <laughs> I got to up my game. No, nah, it's all good. Yeah, so thank you so much, Nate Kading, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. And thank you, everybody, for listening to the show, and uh, we'll see you all in the future. What a great conversation with Nate Kading. Thank you so much for listening. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Have a great day. The Steve Shriver Podcast is brought to you by Ecolips, the original lip balm. Use the promo code PODCAST20 for 20% off your first order at Ecolips.com. Keep up with the show at SteveShriverPodcast.com and the Steve Shriver Podcast on Facebook.